Dynamite with a laser beam. To blow your mind. Yes, that's right. That's not Laura Imbruglia. That's Queen and their song Killer Queen. And in a way, Laura Imbruglia, with her wry smile and bemused big blue eyes, is the killer queen of punky pop songs. Queen and the Carpenters had a big impact on the early musical life of little Laura Imbruglia. Yeah, when I was a kid, mum and dad, they just listened to the radio in the car. That was it. We had a Carpenters tape that we used to play in the car and all the whole family sing along to really loud. And, uh, and I didn't get into good music until high school. I got into Nirvana and stuff. That's not a nice... Only 20, the indie singer-songwriter released her first EP in 2003 called It Makes a Crunchy Noise. It was quirky and light-hearted, punchline-driven, with self-effacing lyrics. But things have changed with the release of her self-titled debut album. Her songs are harder, more rockier, but still with a pop sensibility. This change could be due to the addition of drummer Nick Kennedy and bass player Stiff. Imbruglia explains her musical evolution. I only had an acoustic guitar for a long time and then my manager was like, oh, I've got an electric, I'll lend you my electric guitar and see what you come up with. And I started writing totally different sort of riffs and so I got a band together and it um, took me a while to get a good solid lineup that I was happy with. <laughs> The songs that feature on Laura Imbruglia's album are like a crazy audio alchemy. They are so varied. Her album has indie rock gems like Hurt My Feelings through to the absurdist journey of my dreams of a magical washing machine. Imbruglia thinks back about the song. I had a washing machine that was really noisy. It was in the kitchen. It sounded like a siren. It was really noisy and you'd be on the phone and someone would be like, what is that? And it's like, oh, sorry, it's my washing machine. I must have been stoned or something one night and I was like just writing and that was what was bothering me at the time. That was one of the songs where it's like, oh, no, I'll just write this stupid song and leave it as it is. Overall, the album has an unguarded, youthful innocence about it. Sometimes it feels like a teenager's diary set to music, and in a way that's understandable since Laura Imbruglia is only 24 years old. But does she worry about revealing so much? That's the weird thing about me. Like, I guess um, maybe I'm a Gemini. Maybe it's got something to do with that. There's, like, a part of me is worried about people, what people think, and, you know, if people criticise the lyrics or something, then I'll be, like, really hurt about it. But then on the other hand, it's like I don't know how to write any other way. And uh, for the most part, I write really literally, so I think it would sound really contrived if I tried to write any other way than how it naturally comes out. <laughs> It's not her first time in Europe. She came late last year on a solo tour supporting American artist Chuck Prophet. But this is her first headline tour of Europe with a band. Imbruglia feels it's a good time to be touring since she puts so much time into crafting her latest release before taking it on the road. She's proving very popular in Germany with crowds at her concerts with CDs to be signed by the droll young singer. Did the major labels move in on her like they did with her sister and fellow singer Natalie Imbruglia? 
they know that not working the Natalie angle, like I'm completely against trading on her name or riding coattails. So they, I guess they already knew to just stay the hell away from me unless they're interested in the music and in doing things the way that I want to do them. But I don't need to live off music if it means sacrificing every, everything else. After her European tour, feisty Laura Imbruglia is taking her blend of quirky pop and young punk attitude back to Australia to develop further her heartfelt, personal and witty music. Cheryl Northey, Deutsche Welle Radio, Cologne.